So we have our Docker file here from our last video, and we have a Docker image created from it. Let's see if we can actually get some code running from this. So instead of that image we just made, we can run a new container based off of it again. I'm gonna put this in the foreground and I'll run bash inside of it. We can see that we have Nginx installed and I'll go to the sites available where server configurations are for Nginx and I'll cat out the only configuration file that is there and that's the default. And this is mostly commented out stuff. And all it's really doing is listening on port 80 and it's just going to bar .html for a web root. And it really isn't gonna find anything except what's in var dub HTML. And what is in there by default will be the index uh, default Nginx Debian page. So we haven't configured this to actually communicate to PHP at all, right? All that PHP stuff here is commented out. So what we need to do is add a configuration in here that's gonna work with PHP. And then we can test out a PHP page to make sure that's working in Nginx. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So uh, let's just do some cleanup here. I have a container still running, so I'm gonna do Docker remove and the container ID, and you can even do the container name. Oops, I have to stop it first. So we'll do Docker stop and then Docker remove that container, although I think we're stopping it will uh, get rid of it. Yep, because we use that dash dash rm flag. Docker ps, they're gone. Docker ps dash a, we have a remaining one that's stopped as well. It still exists, it's just stopped. And I'll remove that. All right, so we're in a relatively clean slate here. And we can see we're in a clean state. Basically, we have no containers running or stopped and existing. We only have some Docker images here that we've made. So we are gonna edit this Docker image once again and get some configuration going. So inside of here, the app directory, I'm gonna create a new file. I'm just call it default. And I'm just gonna keep it named default, just like the default configuration is in our Nginx container now. And inside of it, I'm gonna copy a basic configuration. We noticed that our web root has changed from var dub HTML to var dub HTML public. So this is going to support the public, the correct uh, public web root that should be a web root for a Laravel application, which is what we'll be installing. I added index.php as an index. Server name remains the default, care set UTF-8. Uh, don't log access or error for favicon or robots.txt. And then our try files is adjusted to work with PHP. This is kind of the standard PHP configuration to fall back to the index.php file and pass any query strings if there are any. And then it goes to PHP. Any files ending in .php get sent to our PHP FPM, PHP 7.2 FPM, which is listening for connections at this Unix socket file, and it includes the configuration for FastCGI that it has by default. Any error page for 404, so any page not found, is also going to reuse the index.php file. So it's going to get send any 404 uh, error pages, any um, requests to index.php for it to fulfill. So pretty standard PHP configuration for Nginx. Now we need our Docker file to use this configuration. So we're gonna go back here and I'm just gonna use the add instruction to tell it to add a file. Now these are using file paths, right? So remember when I did that Docker build command, we not only told it what to name the image and where to find the Docker file with the dash F flag, but we also gave it a directory to run from a context. And Docker app is the directory that contains Docker app, the default file. And that's how we know when we say add the default file, and add it to this location inside of the container, we know it's going to be able to find the default file because it's in the Docker app directory. And that is the context, the directory we told the Docker build command to run from. So it's gonna find the default file inside of Docker app default. It's gonna add it to Etsy Nginx sites available inside of the Docker container. Okay, so let's go ahead and build that or run this build command. And this is gonna be really fast because everything else is cached, it's already done. The only new instruction that's not using cache is the add item that we just added here. All right, so now docker image ls. We'll see our new image here and our old untagged one still, but we have our new docker uh, image here, or I'm sorry, our application image shipping docker app. And we can do a docker run command from that. So let's see, I want this to run, I'm gonna run bash again and we'll make it interactive, perfect. So psaux grep nginx, nginx is not there. And let's see, how can I run this? Well, we have to do a few things. So let's go ahead and do this. We want to run code inside of an application. So let's make a directory. We're gonna make that directory, we're gonna call it application, and then I'm gonna add application index.php. And I'm just gonna dump PHP info from that. We'll pretend this is a whole PHP application. Inside of the application directory, I'm also gonna create an index.html file, and it's gonna say hello, docker. Okay, great. 
So I'm going to do Docker run once again. Do um, I'm going to put it in the background, not IT. I'm going to tell it to run Nginx to start. Remove it when it's done. And I'm also going to tell it to share port 8080 on my local host with port 80 inside of the container. So if I go to localhost port 8080 on my Macintosh, that's going to get forwarded into the container to port 80 where Nginx is listening. Now I'm also going to share a volume. So I'm going to share the current directory. So let's actually output that using PWD. And uh, that's just going to print the working directory where I currently am in my computer, which is site's PHP app, and tell it to share the application directory inside of there. So this will get expanded out to site's PHP app application. And it's going to share that local directory in my Macintosh to the directory var www HTML public, where we set the web root inside of the container. So this is where it's going to plop the files from my local computer into the container, into var www HTML public. Let's run that. Make sure it's still running. It is. And we can do curl localhost port 8080, and we'll see our index.html file. And we can see that in the browser as well at port 8080. It's grabbing the index.html file. Let's grab, well, let's be explicit and say index.html. That's finding it. So this is being served from the Docker container. Index.php, bad gateway error. Now, this makes sense because we only told it to run nginx, right? So if I do docker exec, so this is a new command for us. I did docker run to spin up a new container, but I can run execute exec against a currently running container as well. So docker exec, I'm going to make it interactive so we can interact with it. I'm going to grab the uh, currently running container name, and inside of that, I want to run bash. So I'm e executing bash inside of the currently running container, which is itself running uh, Nginx by default, right? We have Nginx running here, but PHP is not running, right? And PHP FPM needs to be running to fulfill a PHP request. So we started the container with Nginx, but we actually need it to run both Nginx and PHP at the same time. So in the next video, we're going to see how to set that up so we can actually start serving a PHP application.